Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So today, instead of fixing stuff or upgrading computers, I'm going to talk about electronics that 99% of you guys definitely have, but you probably don't think about it twice unless this happens. That's right, today I'm going to talk about the Wi-Fi routers and some bottlenecks on your network setup. So the router here is my older one that I've just replaced today, but this one is perfectly fine for probably 80% of the viewers if you're just watching some YouTube videos or streaming some movies. But I just set up a NAS using my old laptop, and um, I'm editing videos all from the hard drive in that computer, and this router is actually the bottleneck for my local network. Now this model is the AC1350, which means that it has a lump to throughput of somewhere around 1350 megabits per second, but those lane ports are limiting my local network transfer speed. I think they only have a theoretical capability of 100 megabits per second, which is roughly 10 megabytes per second when you're doing some file transfers. So I just went to Walmart today and picked up this huge upgrade. So I upgraded from this mediocre budget router to this, the new TP-Link AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router. Now this router actually has 4 gigabit link port, which means that I can transfer files a lot faster than the old one. And this one also uses the newest Wi-Fi 6, which is the next generation Wi-Fi center that allows faster speed and more devices to be connected at the same time. So here, as you can see, the old model is capable to transfer files over 5 GHz band, roughly around um, 870 megabits per second. And the new one can transfer files much faster. And if you, if you have the latest smartphone or laptop, just as the um, iPhone 11 or something like that and uses AX series chip and then you are already Wi-Fi 6 capable. This new AX3000 router cost me around 130 bucks from Walmart but if you don't need that kind of throughput I believe for most household users the cheaper AX1500 should be more than enough. And the AX1500 is only somewhere around 70 bucks and in my local network setup I have 13 wireless clients and a lot of them are just smart home devices and I have never encountered any problem even with the older one. So for most household usage, the AX1500 should be more than enough for daily tasks. Alright, enough talking about tech and spec side of this router, let's start unboxing. First, as usual, in the box you have some paperwork, you have the user manual which no one reads and a very nicely thought Wi-Fi information card so you can stick into some of the most convenient places to look for infos like factory, passcode and whatnot. Something about Wi-Fi 6 and some fine printing. And then here is the router itself. I mean this one is only slightly bigger than my old router which only has three antennas but this one isn't as huge as some of the gaming routers that has eight or nine antennas. So just for comparison, here is a 14-ish inch laptop and the router is only somewhere around two-thirds of the width and the width of the router isn't too bad either. And you also get a ethernet cable in the box. So just for comparison, I took my old router here. As you can see, the size of the new router isn't too big of a deal. You can probably fit this one into the place that your old router sits in. So if you want to know more about the Wi-Fi specs and capability, feel free to check the links in the video description below. So the connection for the new router is pretty much the same. You have your ethernet cable comes from your modem to this blue wing port to provide the router with internet access. And then plug whatever the wire devices you want to have to these yellow lane ports. And then here is the power line that uses 12 volt. So to ensure that you're experiencing the full benefit of your new Wi-Fi 6 router, your device must also be Wi-Fi 6 compatible. So if you're using an older model laptop that still uses a Wi-Fi 5, don't worry. The upgrade of a Wi-Fi 6 card is probably easier than upgrading your SSD. It's pretty much plug and play, you don't even need to update the drivers or something like that. So after you take the cover off your machine, 
the Wi-Fi card is usually something that has two wires attached to it. So if you're not so sure of how the network card fits into the machine, you can always take a picture of your smartphone before you take the old one out. So with that being done, we're just going to undo the screw here. And then we're going to use a pair of tweezers to disconnect the black antenna here and the gray one here. And then we're going to wiggle the Wi-Fi card out. Now we're going to take our new chip and do a quick comparison. So the pin configuration between the two is actually a little bit different, but this won't affect the system compatibility. So after we put the screw back on, the two antennas are a little bit tricky to assemble, so take your time when doing this. When you put it back correctly, you'll hear a satisfying click sound that it indicates a snap fit. Okay, with the hardware being set up correctly, let's do a speed test. Now before we test a new router, let's see how does the old one perform. So here I have downloaded one of my old videos of touchpad changing for my ThinkPad W540. Now this video is roughly out around 108 megabytes, and now I'm trying to copy this into my local NAS. So this test does not depend on my network speed of my ISP, so it's a pure test of the speed of the router and my computers. So here, as you can see, the speed starts around 5 megabytes per second and it's gradually picking up, but it's not so great. And it's kept somewhere around 10 megabytes per second, I think. And with that being said, let's give the new router a try. So here I'm just copying the same video into the same folder, and the speed here is much faster. It's around 50 megabytes per second. So notice I'm still using a wireless network, so the signal length will definitely have an effect on the actual speed of the transfer. Now because my NAS is connected to one of the blue gigabit LAN port in the back of this router, so theoretically under perfect condition, the maximum transfer speed should be somewhere around 100 megabytes per second. So that's it for this video. Hope you find it helpful in upgrading your network setup. If it is helpful, give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. So next time I'll be doing a video about setting up a NAS. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned.